Here are some important reminders to help ensure that you and your family are safe. Wash your hands thoroughly and regularly with antibacterial soap for at least 20 seconds. Please avoid crowded places and make sure you are at least one to two meters away from others. Never leave the house without your face mask. Make sure it covers your nose down to your mouth. Make the most out of the online services that are available today. If you must leave your home, please sanitize your belongings and bathe immediately upon return. Remember, W-O-W, -W, wash your hands, observe social distancing, wear your face masks. Being safe and staying healthy should be our number one priority. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Without Walls. Our church exists to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in word and in deed, in the context of everyday life, for the glory of God and for the good of our city. Every Sunday, we gather as a church to meet with God and reorient our worship of Jesus. Together, we get to sing His praises, hear His word preached, and be sent out as His people. We are so glad to have you with us today. Here's what's happening for this week. Prayer Hour, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Equip Midweek, Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Life Groups, happening throughout the week. Still not part of a life group? Email community at withoutwalls.ph and we will help you get connected to one. Subscribe to Daily Devotions. Email us at community at withoutwalls.ph Join our Viber community. To get the latest updates and quick access to our Zoom links, simply scan the QR code on your screen to join. God loves a cheerful giver. Log on to withoutwalls.ph slash give to find out how you can give today. Psalm 91 verses 9 to 11 Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. And verses 14 to 16 Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. With an open heart and with a smile, let us worship the Lord. Died. The wrath of God was 
my rock and my redeemer, gracious Savior of my ruined life. My guilt and cross laid on your shoulders. In my place, you suffered, bled, and died. You Today we're reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 22. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. What a joy it is, Lord, to listen to your word and to hear about the story of Simeon. Just like Simeon, Lord, we, we wait in eager expectation for your coming. Thank you for the promises you gave us that we have something to look forward to. Thank you for giving us that hope to wait for your coming. Lord Jesus, we truly are so excited to, to just wait for your promises to come true and more to welcome you into our lives and to see the coming King. We praise you, Lord, and we are grateful for today. Bless us through your word and through what will be shared in wisdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Without Walls. What wonderful worship we just had. Thank you for being here once again. My name is Luigi Tabuena. I am the lead pastor for Without Walls Ministries. And I pray, and the team prays, and we all pray, that the Holy Spirit touches you in a brand new way this morning. Through not just His Word, not just through worship, but the Gospel which still remains to be the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's just dive right into our message this morning. I remember last week, Pastor Gene preached an awesome sermon um, entitled, God is on our side. And he, he used Psalm 124 as his text. And if you remember the psalm, it talks about how people uh, will attack you, uh, how people will be angry at you, and how things will 
seem to swallow you alive or engulf you and sweep you over. But still, through all of that, the Bible still says the Lord is on your side, is on our side. And we, we need to praise him for that. Can you say amen? And as Pastor Gene was preaching that, I, I, was, I was thinking that, did this guy read my notes? Did he know what I was going to preach this, this Sunday? He did not. He still does not. But I want to sort of follow up on what Pastor Gene preached last week uh, with this uh, message uh, this Sunday. Um, there about 1990, I was born again. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Uh, I received Jesus Christ in my life. That's how we were taught. And, and, but we were also taught then that as soon as you do, as soon as we do that, and that's the way we used to evangelize, that's the way we used to share God's word. As soon as you get born again, we used to tell people, and they, used to, they, used, they told me that, you know, your relationships will be restored, your body will be healed, everything will be okay, you'll be uh, rich uh, with uh, finances, you'll, you'll have the car of your dreams. Uh, and if it doesn't happen, that's all on you because of your lack of faith. So in other words, be born again and blessings will come. That's the way I was taught. How many of you came from teaching like that? You see, a lot of us, most people in general, like teaching of that sort. We like to believe in that sort of preaching and teaching. Amen? For 14 years, that's what I believed. For 14 years, that was my mindset. That was what I thought a real Christian should be. Or a Christian should be. But that's not the gospel. And I found out many years afterwards. That is not real Christianity. Before our time is over this morning. I pray that you learn something. From the conversation we will have this morning. Amen. This morning our text comes. More or less at the time when Jesus has been born already and, and has been circumcised. And usually that happens to the Jews eight days after birth. And he was circumcised not because he had to, but to fulfill the law. And after and within 40 days, he is presented to the Lord in the temple. Notice he's not baptized. He's presented or what we do now, what we know of, dedicated now. And this is the setting. This is the time frame that our text finds us. So verse 22 says, When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Let's, let's jump to verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was, a, who was righteous and devout. Now notice, he was righteous and devout. Righteous towards men, devout towards God. Amen? And let's remember something this early. These two, being righteous and devout, always should go together. Amen? And, and now we, it's, it's actually termed as loving God and loving people. If we say we love God, we need to love people as well. Jesus said that. Amen. And so, who was righteous and devout and the Holy Spirit, no, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. So Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel, which is the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And he is our consolation as well. Amen. And the Holy Spirit was on him. 
Verse 26 now. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Wow. Moved by the Spirit, verse 27, he went into the temple courts. So he went to the temple courts because he was urged, he was egged on, he was moved by the Spirit to go. May we, may you and I, may may we be so moved by the Holy Spirit so that we can be where we are supposed to be and we can do what we are supposed to do. Amen. Moved by the Holy Spirit, he went in the temple courts. And when, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, verse 28 says, Simeon took him in his arms. Therefore, Jesus is just a baby. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, say. You know, before we go to verse 29, it's interesting that Simeon took the baby of another without asking permission, took him in his arms, Carried him, siguro kung tayo yun, away na, di ba? And praise God saying, look at what the Simeon says. Sovereign Lord, in verse 29, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant himself in peace. In other words, I can die, Simeon saying. For my eyes have seen your salvation. What a wonderful thing happened to Simeon here. See, as many of us, or all of us, have this fear of death. But it seems that if you see, if you have faith, if you have by faith seen Jesus Christ, it seems to be saying that we can face death without fear. Without terror. Amen. That's what happened to Simeon. Verse 31. Which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. Verse 32. A light for revelation to the Gentiles. To the non-Jews. And the glory of your people Israel. Wow. What great things Simeon said. But he said other things as well which we will add to our text. And this is where we will park. This is, this is the crux. This is the subject of our time together. In verse 33, the Bible says, the child's father and mother, Joseph and Mary, marveled at what was said about him, what Simeon said about him. It's interesting That even Joseph and Mary did not grasp the identity, the true identity of Jesus Christ. Because it says they were, they marveled. They were intrigued. They could, they could not believe their ears. They were, they were in awe. They were like saying, what is all of this? What is this man saying about our son? Parang they did not grasp what the angel told her. And told, and told Joseph. Diba? Parang, parang nakalimutan nila. And it gets more intense. In verse 34, Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child, Simeon says, is destined, listen, is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against. Verse 35, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your own soul too. Now the last two verses, verses 34 and 35, are not shared from the pulpit too many times. People don't like to hear that. 
It's not very easy to accept. I don't think there are many worship songs using the text, these last two verses especially. But in these verses, we can find a huge explanation or definition of what it means to be a real Christian. Like I said earlier, for the longest time, I thought, and I was taught, that after I get born again, everything in my life will be great. Wala na akong problema. What hopefully we will see this morning is that being a Christian is not about, it's not all about peace. It's not all about peace on earth and goodwill, the goodwill to mankind. It's not about, it's not all about prosperity and abundance. No, no, no. Let me just give you an example in a way of metaphor. Many years ago, I met this young man as I was having this chronic uh, neck aches, I could, I, I, my neck always ached and I couldn't shake it off. I went to chiropractors, I went to doctors and I and, and took all sorts of uh, medicine and stuff and it, 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 the pain used to leave but the pain always came back. And I, I, I met this young, young man and who, who's not a chiropractor, not a doctor, but he manipulated muscles. And, and, and when I asked him what, what exactly this, he said it was myovasotherapy. And he, I went to his, to the house of his uncle where he had a, a room that was, that he used to use in Makati. And he treated me there. And it was, took all of 15, 20 minutes. And it was painful. How he manipulated my muscles in my neck and my back was, was terribly painful. The treatment was painful. But it got better. In fact, the pain disappeared. And whenever I had other pains in my body, one time I had a frozen shoulder, I couldn't shake it off, I couldn't do... Yeah, whatever, whatever exercise I did, it didn't go away. I went to him as well, and true enough, I went to 15 or 20 minutes of excruciating pain. But the pain, there was no more frozen shoulder. It was fantastic, but it was painful. But I, I got so addicted to it, that I reserved every Tuesday, every week, my two o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, I was with this guy, whether my body ached or not. To the extent that my body, there's no aches and pains. So I used to bring friends. I used to accompany them to have my time slot, my 15 or 20 minutes. One guy I brought had a tennis elbow. I did not tell him that it would be painful. I sat there in front of him, laughing as my friend was suffering through the pain. I did not tell him it would be painful. I told him he'll get better. I saw him kneeling down, almost crying because of the pain. But you know what? It felt better afterwards. Two or three days afterwards, there was no more pain. There was no more tennis elbow issue. Amen? Many times, you have to feel worse before you feel better. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 34, 10, 34, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Wow. So 
So a relationship with Jesus Christ will cut like a sword. Faith in Christ cuts you, cuts me, cuts our friendships, cuts our family relations, even marriages. It cuts. Normally we think Jesus, when we think of Jesus, we think of Jesus bringing people together. But many times Jesus is divisive. He was then and he still is now. Amen. So the disciples needed to determine for themselves, is it worth following Christ? Because it hurts. Is it worth following him and leaving my family? Because to follow him, they had to leave their families. Certainly that hurt. Today, you and I, we need to do the same. We need to determine for ourselves the cost of following Jesus Christ. Jesus says, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. This is shocking. This shocked me when I read it. This woke me up, these verses, this verse. And I, I believe he said this to do just that, to shock us, to wake us up, to, to make him, to make us take him seriously. See, notice what he's saying. I have not, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. In other words, notice the origin. He is coming from outside earth, outside our world system, to the earth. His message is not of this world. Amen. And the message that he brings cuts like a sword. It hurts. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says it like this. For the word of God is alive and active. And watch this. Sharper than any double-edged sword. Double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit. Watch that. How, how do you divide Soul and spirit. But the sword of God, the word of God is so alive and active that it divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. God's word is that sharp. So, Peace does not define the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus comes into the world with authority, but he comes to the world with supreme authority. That's why he demands from everybody, from family, from brother, sister, from school, from business, from church, from political parties, even countries, he demands an allegiance that is superior, a superior allegiance, a superior love, because he is supreme over all. He cuts through every affection, every allegiance that you have that would compete with him for the supreme place in our hearts. Amen? He will cut through every affection that we have. Every relationship that we have. He has come to confront, to challenge, to destroy, to cut off all human allegiances and affections that do not put him first. That makes you and I think. And I implore you to think what things have you put before Christ? What things have we put 
above Christ. So Christ is now just number two or number three or number four. Amen. His word, when we receive it, will cut through that. Will confront of, will confront us of that. Will challenge us. Can you say amen? It's a double-edged sword. Because it cuts in this way and it cuts in another. Amen? What are we putting ahead of Christ? What replaces Christ as number one in our hearts? You see, Jesus, Simeon is saying, brings conflict among people. And within people. Among people. Verse 34. Simeon blessed them. Said to Mary. This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. And to be a sign that will be spoken against. In other words, many people will come against him. It will cause a lot of people to fall. To rise. John 3, 19 to 20 says, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. They hate the light because the light illuminates, exposes who they truly are. See, when his light comes, it exposes who we truly are. Amen. Maybe this happened to you as well when you came to Christ, when you got born again. But it happened to me. A lot of friends went out with a lot of people. Did a lot of stupid things. Had a lot of fun, so I thought. When I, but when I started reading the Bible, when I started going to church, even my own friends became distant. They used to say, don't invite Luigi anymore. Labo na yan, pare. Puro praise the Lord na lang marinig mo sa bibig niya. One person very close to me even said, you know, Luigi, okay lang sana you got born again, but don't make it affect our relationship naman. Don't make it affect our business. Because you know, as a real Christian, your walk with Christ affects your relationships, cuts through your relationships, even business relationships. Amen. During my time, there was a saying or there was a phrase, killjoy, KJ, killjoy. I was... I was termed that. I was named that. Para killjoy ka na ngayon na. Amen? Jesus' sword cuts through relationships. And it hurts. It hurts them. And it hurts you as well. See, when Jesus is birthed in you, Many times there won't be room for you in many inns. No vacancy. No room here for you. Go away. Even in the early church, Christians were excluded from getting government jobs or even having business opportunities. Nobody wanted to deal with them. They were, they were abused physically. They were imprisoned. Pa. And, and as it was then, in a sense... So it is today. Can you say amen? 
many years ago, uh, our church was able to get a lease all signed in a school, in a, in a subdivision. We, we, I got to um, make them agree to uh, uh, rent their auditorium so that we can have uh, church services. But when another church in the same subdivision heard that that was happening, they pressured this school to cancel our lease. And now we could have fought for it, but we would have caused such a disturbance and that's not what it's about either. But what I'm saying is, and as Simeon is saying as well, Jesus will be offensive in any time, in any place. And anybody who identifies with Jesus will be seen as offensive as well. In other words, church, you and I will offend people because of what we believe. Can someone say amen? And many times we run from that responsibility. And that's why things don't change. And yet, even if we know that we will offend people or society, when Jesus comes into our lives, we are called to be peacemakers at the same time. That too brings conflict, doesn't it? How many watch it here? I was going to say, raise up, raise your hand and say amen, but I won't hear you. But how many here consider themselves to be real Christians? And you may think, you know, you, you go to Sundays every uh, Sunday services, no fail. You're part of a life group. You pray for the church. You pray for the pastor. You give uh, weekly, uh, you know, uh, faithfully. You tithe regularly. And, and, and you think, you, you look at yourself as, I'm a pretty good Christian. I'm a real Christian. And as a real Christian... I want you to know that you, you will experience the triumph of ministry, the triumph of peacemaking, but you will also know and feel the heartache of being opposed. Opposed even in your own household. People you love, people you trusted will let you down. Will use you, will take advantage of you. Has that happened to us already? People closest to us turned their back on us. And I ask, why, Lord? Why? Psalm 120, verse 7 says it this way I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So even if we come in peace, people receive it as an act of war. Issues, conflicts, situations will rise among people just because you are a Christian. Amen. And as if this is not enough, it's not just among people that we will have conflict, but also within. There is going to be Conflict within people. Verse 34, Simeon blessed them, said to Mary, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel to be a sign that will be spoken of. In verse 35, it says, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Now, Simeon is speaking to Mary. He's telling Mary in so many words, Mary, you will see your son whipped. You will see your son beaten, crucified, even killed. So he's telling Mary, Mary, your soul will be pierced as well. Wow. So Mary did not just see all of that. 
He saw Jesus whipped, scourged, crucified, eventually killed, murdered. Not only that, but in Mark chapter 3, verse 20, look, look what, what Mary had to go through as well. Then Jesus entered the house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. We're not even able to eat. When his family, listen, when his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him. For they said, what did he say? Read that loud. He is out of his mind. Has anybody told you you're out of your mind? Jesus' family, inclusive of Mary, said he is out of his mind. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. So Mary and the brothers of Jesus wanted to take Jesus away from what he was doing. In other words, nakakahiya ka na Jesus. Alika na uwi na tayo. That was what was happening. Verse 32, a crowd was sitting around him and they told him, Jesus, your mom, your brothers are outside looking for you. See, Mary is an inspiration for us. Remember when the angel approached her and visited her and told her what was going to happen. That she was going to be gave birth by the Holy Spirit. That his name is going to be Jesus. She said, be done unto me according to your word. What an inspiration. What an act of faith. But what we see here is that even Mary did not get everything completely right. Because she tried to stop Jesus. She tried to obstruct his ministry. Going to this house to take charge of him. Because he, she... And the, and the brothers thought that he was out of his mind already. It's interesting what Jesus said of his family. Verse 33. When they went there, when, when the disciples told him that your mother and your brothers are at the door. Verse 33 says, Jesus says, who are my mother and my brothers? Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Wow. So Mary does not later on just see how Jesus was treated, how he suffered, and that must have made her feel real bad. And sad, but Jesus, but, but Mary must have suffered as well from Jesus' rebuke. Must have been painful for her as well. Amen. This sword pierced her own sword, her own soul as well. Amen. Church, Mary is showing us, you and I, Mary shows us that if you love him, if you love Jesus, if you have him in your life, a sword will cut your heart as well. If it cut Mary's heart, tayo pa kaya? Amen. Ang bigat, no? This year, 2021, I'm calling every member of Without Walls to share Jesus with a new passion, a new vigor. Not don't leave it to the pastors, don't leave it to the messages on Sunday. You that are out there can reach more people than I can every Sunday. Amen? 
Don't just be a consumer. Be a provider. Don't just be a ministry consumer. Be a ministry provider. Share Christ with a new passion this 2021. But know this. A sword will cut your heart as well. Amen. Pero pastor, wala naman akong problema. Ganun, okay lang ako. I have no troubles at all. Wala akong problema ever since I I I receive Christ as my my Lord and Savior. I've, I've been trouble free. I have no problems. I have no issues. My friend, respectfully, look at my heart. If you have no trouble at all as a Christian, if you have no problems, if you have no issues, my friend, with all sensitivity, I seriously doubt your salvation. My friend, as a Christian, you will have external conflict with others. You will also have inner conflict with yourself. You will experience doubt. You will experience confusion. You will miss it. Many times pa. Sometimes big time you will miss it. Things will go wrong. I mean, wait for it. You will battle even with God. You will struggle even wrestle with Him, even with yourself. Jesus will make people mad. Jesus often causes strife and, and, and struggle. People will be polarized. Many will oppose Jesus. Conflicts will arise as a Christian among people, within people. And yet, this is also the way his peace comes. Amen? Someone once said, a real Christian is not known only for a new peace, but also by a new conflict. Wow! Hindi ba pwede, Lord, doon na lang ako sa new peace? Pwede kong paubayan na lang yung new conflict? Hey, Pastor Rafi or Pastor Jim. Huwag na ako sa conflict, Lord. Hindi ba pwede yun? Hindi. You know, when we were meeting face-to-face uh, -face before this pandemic, I mean, maybe you came on time every Sunday. Or maybe even now, even online. I mean, you're, you're also early. You're, you're joining us at 9 a.m. in a chat group, which saying hello to everybody that's there and, you know, saying uh, welcoming people. Uh, you, uh, and, or, or maybe you actually watch and listen to our online services and sermon and message and worship. Maybe you actually watch it live. In other words, you're there at 10 o'clock. You, you're not like, some who just sleep in and I can watch it naman. I'll watch it lang when I wake up at 11 or when I, uh, maybe this afternoon. Maybe I'll just uh, play tennis first in the morning and then, and then catch up later on. You, you're not one of those. You, you're there at 10 o'clock. In fact, many of you are there at 9, 9 o'clock with our live chat. Or maybe you actually read your Bible regularly. Yeah, you're, you, you have a life group. You lead the life group. You, you've been baptized. You consider yourself a member of the church. You're, you maybe, maybe even, uh, you know, you're married even a Christian service. You're married to somebody from the church. You're married to another Christian, and and and, and life is cool. And, and maybe even even more, even more, you you have the distinct privilege of having Pastor Gus Lisi officiate your wedding. yun, In other words, in your eyes. You are a real Christian. But my friends, if you have never fought for your faith, if you have never had spiritual battles, or if you've never had any conflicts, this Christianity is not the Christianity the Bible is talking about. This is not what Jesus founded and died for. Because real Christianity, the Christianity that Jesus founded, Real Christianity is a battle. And a real Christian is battle-scarred. 
Can you say amen? Not just among people, but within themselves. This new peace that Jesus brings does not come without inner conflict. Church, are you listening? This new peace that Jesus brings does not come without inner conflict. For instance, the inner conflict of repentance. God's peace only comes after the inner conflict of repentance. And repentance is not just the enumeration or a litany of all your sins. It is the agreeing with God that what you did is wrong. Repentance is about making an about face. It's a Repentance is a radical change in direction, a changing of your mind. And repentance causes inner turmoil. Amen? You admit things that you don't want to admit. You acknowledge things are true, that you acknowledge things as true, things that you don't want to acknowledge as true. Repentance is the admitting of your sin. It is seeing your sin, not as other people see it, but as God sees it. And this is painful. There is no way to arrive at this new peace without going through this pain. Pain of repentance. For what? But I've already repented. Maybe you just think you've repented. Maybe your concept of repenting is just complaining to God. See, God's peace only comes after the inner conflict of repentance. And God's peace only comes after the inner conflict that comes with submission. See, your old self wants to remain boss. Your new self wants to let God be God. So there is, there is a fight. There is a tension. There is a struggle for control of your life inside of you. Who will win? Amen? You know, all this has got me thinking of things that I went through, not just in church or family, but you know what? I used to think, Lord, after all I've been through, after 14 years that I've been in church from the time I was born again then, and this, akala ko okay na Di ba okay na ako? Born again na ako? Di ba okay na dapat? Bakit naman ganito? And I started becoming bitter. I started complaining. I started getting angry. Not just with people, but even with God. Until the still small voice asked, Will you now stop trusting in me? Ouch. You know, I've, I've learned so slowly. But I've learned that if you go through suffering, or when you go through suffering, all the more you need to trust in the Lord. Because peace is not far away. Can you say amen? Now don't go out purposely pursuing suffering. There's enough to go around. There's enough for everybody. In fact, as I look back, and as I even look at my life right now, I could see a highlight reel of all the things that I've been complaining about through the years. And you know what? It'll never end. Everybody continues to go through stuff, you and I included. Please remember what Jesus himself said from his own mouth. Do not suppose that I have come to you to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And Simeon said the same thing, diba? And the sword will pierce your own soul too, Simeon said. 
Know this, church. As Christians, we will get our own, our share, our fair share of conflicts and struggles for Jesus' sake. But know this as well. Do not give in to self-pity. Do not start complaining and blaming others for the situation that you're in. You need to know that the ultimate result of all these external and inner conflicts is a deeper peace, a deeper joy. Can you say amen? Simeon is teaching us we should expect, we should be ready for trouble. If Mary was not spared, why will you be spared? Know also that conflict is a way to get peace. You see, Jesus brought peace through his agony on the cross. Do not be surprised when conflicts come upon us. Can you say amen? And let me close with this next verse. In Genesis chapter 3, these verses, starting with verse 22, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us. This is Adam and Eve have just ate of the fruit, the forbidden fruit. The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had taken, that he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden, Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Adam and Eve had just sinned against God. God allowed them everything in the Garden of Eden except to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's exactly what they did. And because of that, they... And us, as their descendants, cannot make it, cannot make our way to the tree of life. There is, there, there is a cherubim. The cherubim there will not allow it. But the question presents itself to us today. Is there still a cherubim today? Flashing a flaming sword back and forth, guarding the way to the tree of life. You see, in the Old Testament, to atone for sin, a substitute, an animal, had to die under the knife. Do you know that there is no more cherubim with a flashing flaming sword guarding access to the tree of life? We, you and I, now have access to this tree of life. You know why? Because Jesus was our substitute. Because Jesus, the sword fell on Jesus Christ for you and for me. That is why there is no more cherubim guarding access to the tree of life. His sword fell on Jesus Christ. The sword that would have fallen you and I fell on him. Amen. That is the gospel. That is the good news. Can you say amen? Amen and amen. Let's pray together, church. Lord God, thank you so much for this time that we've had together, Lord God. Speaking your word, preaching your word to your church, Lord. Lord, I thank you that Every ear was open. Every heart received your implanted word, Lord God. Lord, I thank you truly that your word 
is sharper than a two-edged sword, cutting a dividing line between sword and spirit, bone and marrow, knowing the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. Lord God, have your way in our lives. May we always remember that even during conflicts and situations and issues of life, you never leave us or forsake us, Lord God. And peace is right around the corner because of what you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And God's people say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Please join us for communion, which follows shortly. God bless you, and God bless the Philippines. O oh, great God of highest heaven, occupy my lowly heart. Own it all and reign supreme Conquer every rebel power Let no vice or sin remain That resists your holy war You have loved and purchased me Make me yours forevermore I was blinded by my sin, had no ears to hear your voice. Did not know your love within, had no taste for heaven's joys. Then your spirit gave me life, opened up your word to me. Through the gospel of your Son Gave me endless hope and peace That's dependent on your grace Keep my heart and guard my soul From the evils that I face You are worthy to be praised With my every thought and deed O oh, great God of highest heaven Glorify your name If you are a follower of Christ, we invite you to partake of the Lord's Supper in your home. For your tithes and offerings, you may scan the QR code flashed on your screen below. Thank you, and have a blessed day.